पिंग एंड वेलकम टू गणेश शॉर्ट गणेश शॉर्ट में आप सबका स्वागत है प्रणाम वनकम एंड जय हिंद आज हम इंडिया यूएस रिलेशंस के बारे में बात करेंगे नीड फॉर अ न्यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग एक नया सोच विचार और नया समझ बूझ की जरूरत है भारत और यूएसए के बीच में और इसके बारे में बात करने के लिए मेरे साथ हैं मेरे पुराने गुरु ब्रिगेडियर अरुण सहगल गुड इवनिंग सर एंड वेलकम टू गना शॉर्ट ऑन दिस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक माइक इज म्यूटेड सर माइक इज स्टिल म्यूट या so as i was saying so welcome once again to gana shot with a you. long time since we've had a discussion and on this day when you know just after the day when us has carried out 85 strikes in over seven places in west asia uh, this is an important topic for us to discuss don't you think so and uh, once you give your opening views i'll put across a frame on which we're going to discuss with a map so that everyone understands it better your opening idea sir thank you thank you very much sir it's always a honor to be on your show and to share some perspectives of mine uh as far as indo us relationship is concerned as far as india is concerned it looks at it as a most consequential relationship however there are despite the fact that we have a very up and coming relationship we have walk the talk we have had some we had a state visit by the prime minister we are moving in the direction of setting up the high degree of technology cooperation in critical technologies we are resolving our differences on large number of issues only yesterday the mq9b were got a clearance despite the fact there were rumors in the marketplace that that will not come etc uh, so we are heavily involved in each other but the reality is how do we look at this relationship uh, there are some reliability issues between uh, the two sides and they are driven by ideologies ideology perspectives and number 2 even more importantly is the power perceptions the united states power perceptions of a unipolar power and wanting to dominate continue its global dominance both in terms of military capacity economic capabilities and technological capacities and india as an emerging power wants to shape its strategic space not in the sad kind of a global scenario or a global sense that that the united states has but it's certainly concerned about its immediate region region and which have a tremendous significance for india's strategic interests so there is a little bit of a convergence as well as a discon, uh, disconnect now coming to the, uh, the so before you uh, get further could i give a larger framework of uh, what the global conflicts are at this stage and we could probably examine this relationship in the backdrop of those so for that what i'll do is uh, if you have a look at this map you know this map gives you the global conflicts which are going on at this point of time ukraine the northernmost then you have the widening conflict in west asia and when i say west asia it's a compact of three conflicts israel hamas which has been going on from october 7 then the red sea uh, activity of houthis and the somali pirates have joined in to widen this of the somalian coast where usa and india are in operation then of course you have the problem between iran and its uh, outreach or rather its militias which are operating in iraq syria and to some extent in pakistan and the uh, exchanges of fire there so that's a third angle there besides this there's a lot of tension going on in the south china sea not with sending not least but not the last for the last but not the least i in the afpac region and in myanmar 
there is a lot of uh, chaos going on. <clears throat> what we have seen, sir, if you agree with me, in the past three, four days, mm -hmm. we've undertaken, you know, uh, a whole lot of uh, anti-piracy operations successfully. USA has taken uh, up a lot of strikes against the uh, Iranian-backed militias <clears throat> and Houthis to keep the Red Sea lane open. So effectively, what we are seeing today is a shift in the Indo-Pacific construct. Earlier, the Indo-Pacific construct largely focused on uh, the Western Pacific. Today, the shift is this side. And for the first time probably in history, India and USA are operating in sync, operational sync with each other to ward off the problems. USA is operating at the particular level in this entire episode. And India is operating at an, another level to keep the sea lanes open. To that extent, the Indo-Pacific construct is gaining new meaning in the North Arabian Sea. Uh, simultaneously, as you had mentioned, you know, India is quite bothered about uh, and it's worried about its own uh, you know, immediate neighborhood. We see the problems in Maldives, we see problems in Myanmar, we've seen, of course, Pakistan is going into some kind of new uh, stability stroke, instability after 7th, after the selections, I wouldn't say elections, the selections on 7th. And uh, then, of course, China is still making its inroads into uh, Bangladesh and Nepal. So we have a new paradigm here. in. In this paradigm, we see that at times, USA and India have had differences of opinion. So I think there's a new story which is which we have to reset our relationship. And of course, last but not the least, what's happening in Philippines, what's likely to happen in Taiwan, because a lot of action going on in Fujian, right, where the Chinese are trying to do a lot of uh, things to show that they are preparing for war. So what happens there? Uh, if something happens there, how do, how do India and China, I mean, how do India and USA react? So this whole relationship I see in three different categories and three different levels. So as you would rightly said that there are a whole lot of convergences, but we have our different perspective, perspectives also. So in view of all this, sir, I would request you to start at one end and then we'll see how things move to the other end. Okay. All yours, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you for providing that framework for discussion. Okay, let me start by uh, changing global perspectives because I think it's important to highlight the global dynamics that are at play and which are basically some of the very key drivers to what we are discussing. What we are seeing is the emergence of a bipolar global order and which is undermining the US unipolarity. China has become a peer competitor from the United States and along with Russia as old foe, both of them are challenging the United States unipolarity and it is challenging them both in East Asia, it's challenging them in Europe, and now it is also challenging them, challenging them in uh, West Asia, stroke Middle East. Not so much directly, but fairly large amount of it indirectly. The sum total of this is that India is becoming strategically more important for United States in managing this challenge. This is an important facet because that there is this convergence between two power blocks of China and Russia who are strong militarily and China is strong even economically and technologically and Russia is also strong technologically. There is a, a very clear understanding within the United States that it is important to have India as a strategic partner particularly in the manner it is increasingly being accepted now where it is located. India straddles 
not only the Indian Ocean region, but in terms of influence, also straddles the South China Sea and right up to uh, East Asia to a limited extent. So to to that extent, India's power and uh, and uh, and strategic location are becoming very central to the emerging dynamics that are taking place over here. But like you rightly said, there are key differences. Now these differences need to be highlighted and 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 understood. Sorry, underscored. First is the Ukraine war. India has both principle and strategic view on the role of Russia in this conflict. The conflict, the fact that the Russia has attacked the sovereign country is a wrong. India agrees with that. Like the Prime Minister said, this is not a century of wars, era of wars. But the fact is that they were driven to it is because of the expansion of NATO right on its doorstep. The second element of this is that from Indian perspective, Russia remains an important player, both for our meeting our domestic, sorry, defense, as well as strategic needs. There is another geopolitical perspective. The geopolitical perspective has to be understood is this, that if India breaks up its relationship or, or dilutes its relationship with Russia, then what we have is in the entire Eurasian continental construct, a convergence between China and Russia. And with those convergences now emanating also both in the East in terms of a new well alignment taking place, which is Russia, China, and North Korea. And in the West, which is Russia, sorry, Russia, Iran, China, and Pakistan is also becoming a member of this and trying to cover the Northern Arabian Sea. So in these dynamics, for India, relationship at one level, we have to maintain a, some degree of relationship with Russia. But on the other level, we need to, we have to have a certain degree of credible partnerships and relationships with the United States. So, therefore, India-U.S. relationship has to be seen from a broader strategic perspective. The strategic perspective is this, that in Indo-Pacific, we have a common challenger, that is China. But the challenger's perspective to dealing with the challenger between us and the Americans are different. For the United States, China is a peer competitor. And China, whose core thinking is that to undermine U.S. presence and U.S. military capacity and capability in Asia, thereby pushing the United States into a second great power in Asia. And that will lead to what they believe is a Sinocentric Asia, which leads to a Chinese dominance. This is clearly against our interests. So we, we join with the United States as part of quadrilateral, these are part of maritime domain initiatives. We do a large number of exercises. We we train together. The whole idea is, and we share intelligence. The whole idea basically is is that to contain and constrain China. Containment is the American issue. We ours is a constraining China. We are also aware of the fact is that if China is not constrained. China will further take over the South China Sea. It is already converted into its lake. It administers the South China Sea. And thereafter, it will start moving towards the Indian Ocean. And we are seeing what is happening in the Indian Ocean. Uh, we, so to that extent, we have to be clear that we have a certain degree of convergences with the United States. Having said that, I'll come to strategic neighborhood a little later on. But having said that, there is a problem. The problem basically is this. Is the United States is currently 
focused on East Asia, Western Pacific, building up bilaterals, trilaterals, minilaterals to, to ensure security of its interests and to undermine the Chinese over assertions on its grey zone and its attempts to uh, intimidate and tomorrow may offensively attack Taiwan. In that, rightly brought out by the general, the South China Sea is becoming an important player and Philippines is becoming a critical element. Why Philippines? If you see the map, where Taiwan ends, there is a channel, I forget the name of the channel, Bhoya channel. Bashi channel, sir. Bashi channel. Bashi channel, sorry. Bashi, Bashi channel. channel. And then you link up with Philippines. Now, it is five days sailing time from Guam for the US forces to enter into this area. So therefore, the security of this lane becomes critically important. And because of the security of this lane is critically important, Philippines is becoming a linchpin of the American strategy in this region. And if you notice, that there have been large number of joint patrolling joint exercises and the Chinese are pretty unhappy about it. Now we come to the Middle East. That's the area which the general talked about. In Middle East, there are three elements at play. Like you rightly said, there's a Hamas-Israel war, which is continuing to no end. And I don't think the Israelis have any idea how long it will take not they don't know no they don't even understand what is the concept of victory because in our discussions with the jerusalem institute of strategic studies we try to elicit this answer we did not could not get a clear clarity added to that is this now the new element of houthis are coming in houthis are in support with hamas and with certain elements the houthis are attacking shipping in the red sea as well as now, they have also started to attack shipping in the Northern Arabian Sea. Now, this has become a point of convergence. Why? Between us and the Americans. There is no official convergence issue, but there is a huge amount of, of discussion, discourses, and understanding of to how to handle this problem. The problem is being handled by by concert of the so-called coalition, under that some sea guardian, whatever guardian name that uh, uh, the operation is being called, under that operation, they are trying to manage the Houthi problem in the Red Sea. And India, along with the deployment of 13 first-line warships, is now trying to deal with this problem in the Northern Arabian Sea uh, to ensure that the critical supply lines are kept open. For India, it is critical because all our majority of oil from Russia and other trade from, uh, from Europe passes through this. Even more importantly, we are providing close to about $200 billion plus worth of finished petroleum products to Europe. And those products are going through this, uh, through, through this region. So to us, it's critical. And what is also more important is that in the last couple of weeks, as everybody knows, that we have mounted very effective counter piracy operations and freed our neighbor Sri Lankans, our good friends Pakistanis and Iranians from, from, the, from the trouble which is being done by these pirates. So, so there is... And, and this is important. It is important for our American friends. And only yesterday, no, two days back, in our discussion with Americans, we are saying that this narrative of India playing an important role in keeping the sea lines of communication open and dealing with this piracy threat is not fully being appreciated in the United States. Your discourses, your, your your writings, your your think tank perspective, and even within the administration, while they respect it, but it's not being fully appreciated. So when we talk about I2U2 or we talk about IMEC, the criticality 
of India's role is becoming apparent. And this is an important issue that we need to focus ourselves upon. I'll stop here. I'll, if you have any things to add or correction, I'll come back. I'll, I'll have more to say, but I'll say it a little later. Okay. Yeah, you actually, you touched upon a very important thing, sir. And in my way of thinking, if you look at the Red Sea, and I'll put the map up so that people are in focus. Uh, if you look at the Red Sea, and if you look at the uh, shipping in that area, or for that matter, in the Gulf proper, USA is very active. It is, you know, uh, against, like you said, uh, the Iranian-based rebels, whether they be Houthis or in Iraq or in Jordan or in Syria. If they're not, all the shipping will get jammed further and the situation will only get worse. So they're doing it. But at the same time, one thing which has come out very clearly is that it is also beyond the United States to handle the new emerging threat or the re-emerging threat of the Somalia coast of pirates. <clears throat> and that this action could spread to the North Arabian Sea. And the important point which you mentioned about Iran, Pakistan, China, and Russia playing their hands as per their interest to disrupt oil flows in this area or the energy flows in this area. I don't think without the effect or without India's operations out here, USA can you know, achieve anything. In fact, they, I don't think they can achieve anything. The second thing which has come out very clearly is the Chinese are probably either incapable or not willing to get their hands dirty in this game. And they're laying off. Why they're laying off, we don't know. But I think they're missing a damn good opportunity at making a lot of statements. But having said this, uh, I would like your views because we spoke of the cord and everything there. But that whole story of operationalizing the cord into something which can be operationally effective in combat situations is happening here. And this is something which we need to talk of increasingly in the Indo-US construct. Uh, your views on this part, sir. See, as far well as Indo-Pacific is concerned and quadrilateral and our relationship with the United States is concerned, there are two perspectives. Perspective number one is, like I said, the entire focus of the United States and its allies. Okay, the United States and its allies is, is focused on East Asia and managing the Chinese threat in East Asia. The Chinese are playing an interesting game through anti excess area denial strategy, through show of force, etc. It is containing. United States and its major allies in East Asia. And thereafter, what they are trying to do is two things. Southeast Asia is being is being overtaken or being brought under a sphere of influence both economically, politically, and militarily. And consequently, it has become South, like I said, South China Sea has become a Chinese lake. Chinese administer. You cannot do an exercise over there. You have to take their permission. Chinese naval militia, maritime militia is over, uh, overactive as we have seen what is happening in Thomas Shoal. So the question basically is this. Is that Chinese are now controlling the South China Sea it has got two perspectives. One perspective is South China Sea is an important area to provide depth to the Chinese East, Eastern China or the Chinese coastline, which is the nerve center of Chinese economic and, and political power. The second element is this, is that having built the 450 odd ship Navy and four aircraft carriers, which are now going to be operational so all of them will be operational by 30, 20, 2035. Second, third one is now being launched, as we all know. The question comes about is this, is that the focus is incrementally going to shift into the Indian Ocean. Now, here again, there is a problem coming up. 
the problem coming up is that the area of Bay of Bengal <clears throat> is becoming a China centric or China controlled arena. How? There is, we see on Cocoa Islands, the Chinese have established advanced facilities, information facilities, surveillance facilities. And tomorrow they can bring in a battery or two of, of ASBM, whatever they want to bring, depending upon their relationship with Myanmar. And as we understand, Myanmar is getting increasingly indebted, including the, the new forces, uh, the independence forces. They are also are getting help from the Chinese. So Chinese are looking at both hands of the thing. They're looking at the, uh, the military as well as the, uh, as the uh, independent forces. The, the second element is this, is that Chakfu is being securitized primarily because Chakfu is becoming a major area for, for oil pumping, for oil resources, which are now coming with large tankers to single boy moorings. And from single boy moorings, it's being pumped into the pipelines, which go up, go to the southwestern China for where they are refined. We have also heard that attempt is being made to create a, a new link through Thailand, through those two ports, or not Karakanal, but through the port systems. So the question basically is this. And then we also have this whole Chittagong, where the Chinese are uh, uh, are coming in a big way, and we, they have created a submarine base. So in our backyard, there is a large amount of Chinese movements taking place. Now we go down further south. We go to Sri Lanka. Sri Lankans might say anything in good measure, but the fact of the matter is that Hamban Tota is 99 year D on them. The Hamban Tota airport is under the Chinese control. Who can stop the Chinese from staging forward if they want to do? Now, next issue comes in the new element which has now been brought in by the Maldives. Maldives sits astride one of the key sea lines of communication. And if, if there is a Chinese uh, uh, deployment over there, they not only will they pick up the trade, our movement of our shipping in that area, all our western fleets and the eastern fleets who, who, who transit from one and the other, their shipping will be picked up. So the question is not this, this simple thing about, about uh, what is happening, uh, 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 all the, what is China, Chinese can do, etc. It is the question is this, is that it provides at forward basing facilities, information facilities, backed up by the satellite communication that the Chinese have all along. It, it becomes an area which becomes an area of serious concern to us. Now, a problem with the Americans with this is this, is that they are simply not capable they do not have the resources fighting the Ukraine war, now supporting the Israelis, and now fighting these crazy wars in amongst Houthis and 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 uh, seven eight asymmetric conflicts with Iraq and Syria, etc. They simply do not have the resources to deploy in this region. If they do not have the resources to deploy in this region, and I have already talked about the fact that the new coalition of of uh, Pakistan, Iran, Russia, and China coming up in this, you know, who are doing exercises. They've done three exercises already. And, and so the question that comes from Indian perspective is this, and this is something which we keep pointing to the American friends is this, is that our immediate security interests are not being addressed directly. If we are part of the Indo-Pacific, if we are part of the quadrilateral, it cannot happen that the core con security concerns of only allies and America in the East, in East Asia and, and, and Western Pacific are addressed. India's core concerns are not addressed. And this, this is something which is taken seriously by the Americans, but I do not think that this is going gonna, gonna to happen anytime soon. There's one so more element. The point. No, that's the point which I was trying to make. So. Uh, so far, we've been having a position where we've been saying that our core concerns are not being met. Right. And so far, the focus of 
America and its allies. I'm talking of allies, allies mm -hmm. like Japan, South Korea, and Australia. Their focus was on Western Pacific, South China Sea, containing China, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But today, the reality is that USA is well and I well fixed, if I may say, in West Asia. It cannot get out of that area, you know, uh, and leave Israel to its the thing because Israel will get finished off in some form or the other. <clears throat> So it has to be there. It also has to keep the shipping lanes open. There's no choice because its entire allies depend on the shipping lanes being open only through uh, USA. So USA is committed there. USA, like you rightly said, is stretched in terms of being able to handle the you know area of South China Sea and the uh, Taiwan Straits. And now, if China comes and sits in Maldives or uh, Humboldt Dota, it not only affects India, it affects them also. So, I'm sure the US people understand that there's a new paradigm, there's a new threat emerging and the old Indo-Pacific has to expand into the new Indo-Pacific right up to the Arabian Sea and the east coast of Africa. So, th that is from their point of view. From our point of view, with the new Arabian, uh, North Arabian front opening up, I would call it a front because I don't see this going away so fast. And I also see a lot of our naval commitment there for a long time to come. Right. And I also see a lot of cooperation which is required operationally, operationally, in, and maybe in combat situations between USA and India. And at the same time, uh, we have a problem. In our immediate neighborhood, you forget the uh, in, uh, uh, you know the Pacific part of the Indo at this point of time. Isn't there a case for us to also rethink our relationship with Russia, uh, China, sorry, with USA and take it to the next level? I mean, as much as we expect the US to uh, rethink their ideas about India, isn't there a case for us to rethink our relationship with uh, USA? Sir, we make three points to Americans. Point number one that we make is this, is that if you are looking at Indo-Pacific, we must have an Indo-Pacific strategy. We cannot have an East-Pacific strategy or a Pacific strategy or an or, or Asia-Pacific strategy. We need to have an Indo-Pacific strategy. The second point we make to them is this, is that we understand that the United States does not have the capacity and the capability. They do not have the capacity. They are, they are overextended. We, that our next point to them is this. Why can't we look at AUKUS kind of programs that you, have, you are putting together uh, with Australia and uh, UK and also now try to build up uh, facilities with the uh, capacities of Japan and Korea? Why cannot we have a more active program? We have done a couple of exercises on critical technology areas. We have done, I mean, I have been, I have been leading the Indian side on that. But the fact of the matter is this, is that Americans are slow on this. The third element is that what is happening right now is this, that the Australians are being encouraged to play a more important role in the Indian Ocean, as also if you must have had the uh, British will come in, then the French will come in, etc., etc. The point from our perspective is very simple: we are maintaining a 17 or 18 ship patrol right through all over the critical areas, uh, 24 by 7. It is, it is, it hurts our capacities, it hurts our capabilities, and it uh, uh, and it has affects our operational efficiency. We want some of these roles to be taken up by these partners. The simple answer is that they are simply not forthcoming. Although I am told the Australians are now showing some interest in, in. So we have a lot of talk about talk, but we do not have anything substantial on the plate as, as we discuss. And this is a reality. So therefore, what happens? What happens is this, is that we now have to create capacities and capabilities on our own 
and to deal with these challenges. So one of the issues that you rightly pointed out that has emerged is the key role India can play in maintaining the Northern Arabian Sea and the sea lines of cooperation open for them. You also made an important point. This is not the, or we are not the only one who get their oil and trade. The, the Japanese get it, the Southeast Asians get yeah, it. Complete. And, Japanese are 90% dependent on this. So, so the question which we can always raise with these guys is this, is that why are you making us do heavy lifting? Why are we doing this heavy lifting? What is your contribution to those heavy lifting? Please believe me, our, 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 our discussions with the Japanese and others are very, very frank. But the reality of the matter is this. The Japanese simply say, we either we are stalled by our, our pacifist uh, constitution or we do not have the resources. So the, so, so the, the unfortunate problem right now is this. While we have an understanding, convergences, etc., etc., on paper, and we, we all realize that, it is not per percolating into anything substantial except the fact. I'll give you a small example. Qatar has a huge air base and a, and a, of, of the Americans. Why can't we have a, a, a information sharing agreements with those guys? Although, mind you, we have become now this combined task force, uh, this, uh, what is it called, C combined task force, um, uh, part of that uh, uh, in, in Bahrain, in Bahrain. So we have become oh. part of that. So, so, so that that is that will increase our coordination, etc., etc., etc. But the point is not coordination, sir. The point is the the uh, the uh, the uh, the assets being available. It in answer to IMAC. The Turks are trying to create a separate area uh, of zone of uh, of passage to create a, it's a, a new uh, uh, route. Now that route will go through Syria and Iraq, and and that would then align itself. And who will protect it? The Chinks and the Russians. So the problem for us is this: is that we have to have a relationship with the Russians. But Russians are in a different camp, as particularly in these areas are concerned. Americans do not have the influence. America will come and influence over there in, in the Red Sea or, or, or around the Mediterranean Sea to support the Israelis. They are not going to come into the, this part. From us, the last vestige of, of the American presence is in Dago, Russia, at Archipelago, where there are a man, dog, and a couple of aircrafts. And that's it. So our problems are, and rightly said, is that Chinese influence is increasing. How do we handle this? We are handling it right now. We are doing a great job of handling it right now. But the question is, if push comes to shove, how do we manage this? So this is something which we keep telling the American friends. And they, they realize it, but they do nothing about it, unfortunately. They sad. So I, I I go with what you're saying, sir, that they know it and they probably don't want to do it deliberately. And they probably don't want to do it deliberately because they, they feel that India is not committed to their way of thinking and it has not decoupled or de-risked itself adequately from Russia. So that's their problem. That's the way they look at it. Okay. Having said this, we know we are in a life situation. And uh, and we don't have easy answers. And we don't have internal answers as at now. Maybe five years, ten years hence, when Atman Elbertha comes about, if it does come about, then we might have answers. But is there a case for us to start at least enumerating a new Indo-Pacific strategy or a construct, like you said? Because so yes. far... We have not spoken of it. Is there a case for India to start saying "cod" doesn't mean cod area of responsibility and influence has to come from the east coast of Africa to almost the Japanese coast and the mm -hmm. you know Australian coast, so the Guam line or the second chain of islands, some kind of a thing isn't there for us need for us to talk of these things. 
So you are right, absolutely correct. We do talk about these things, but please understand, people like Kurt Kambar and all that, who are the so-called czars of the uh, Indo-Pacific strategy with the United States and their partners in Australia, Japan, uh, and even Korea. See, they don't look at these things from that perspective. They, they, for the so, so what, what are, what do we say? We say securitize the quad. They say no, quad is not securitized. We cannot quad is a soft security mechanism. This is is was shaping the social impact uh, on the region. We want to uh, economic impact on the region, technological impact of the region is part of our strategy to to contain China's multi multiple uh, influences. We are not going to get involved in in this thing. We do one exercise, as you know, Malabar. We do it this thing, but. That exercise is only always done with the perspective of show of force, interoperability, capability, etc., for contingencies in the areas which are far away from us. They are not our centric contingencies. So the question basically is this: is that how do we how do we push our other quadrilateral partners? See. Japanese are very clear. They say we are this thing uh, constrained by Article Nine. We we are we are not trying to get uh, capability extended uh, fire capabilities on through these tomahawks and all that to we'll protect ourselves. That's it. That's what we're going to do. Australians have are a man and a dog. They have any don't have anything. Yeah, but no. AUKUS program is going to come up only in 2040. Koreans are already having a problem with uh, North Korea have having declared that South Korea is not part of North Korea, and therefore it is it is an enemy territory, and we will really de deal with it as it is. Where does where do we get the resources? This is the problem, sir. I mean, it's all very well to talk about architecture. We talk about architectures all the time, but it always boils down to the soft security issues, soft ideas understanding, etc., etc., but they do not convert anything into tangible security uh, perspectives, which are of consequence uh, to uh, uh, so my, 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 I always tell to this thing is, quadrilateral are relationships in terms of a broader Indo-Pacific framework do not mitigate any of my direct challenges. In fact, if you, by some of your actions, like you do in Myanmar, you were farming a couple of those militias as well, as well as in Bangladesh, they create problems for us. So this is fact, the this is the story. In fact, the, no, this, in fact, sir, the way I look at it, Myanmar is a great opportunity. If we do the right things in Myanmar, uh, China will be in a lot of pain. We, actually, you can carry the fight into the Chinese court. Completely. I mean, that's the way I look at it. And if we handle Bangladesh, I mean, India and USA probably have to start thinking on the same plane. And that's something which I, I unfortunately uh, not seen happening. I agree with you. I mean, in, uh, so you see, something is a success opportunity for us. Yes, we can influence it. But if you read like after 2010 elections, we did a lot of work in inside this thing. We worked with the Japanese. We created uh, new uh, economic zones. We did all that work that we did. But I have been two, three times to Myanmar talking to the military myself and giving lectures over there. The, the question basically then boils down to this sustainability. How? were we able to sustain it. Now we are talking about building a fence on the Manipur border, Myanmar border. So what you are doing is effectively cutting off India's access into ASEAN. I mean, we have a trilateral highway. You are aware of that. I mean, we, yeah, we yes. could not, we could not, we could not convert it. In Kaladan area also, the road which is going into Mizoram, that is now under the control of the independent forces. 
so 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 my point bigger point at issue is that we can have ideas uh, implementing them and having a political will to implement them alone by india will not work we need to have a uh, thing we can have into conversation with the americans sure we can talk about a new architecture i would love to sit down with you and define a new architecture which we can have uh, take uh, take to the americans sure we will we should do it in fact let's see what their response is i, yeah, I mean I, 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 we are, we are on the yes. my last point uh, the, we yeah. are on the threshold of launching a major uh, uh, joint study with the americans on gray zone operations particularly in indian ocean and uh, and india's neighborhood so that's that would be one of the start points of our uh, looking at uh, common challenges sorry yes <clears throat> no 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 problem sir uh, the issue is that having said this because the problem is at our doorstep right and our doorstep right and proper either you look to our east or to our west or to our south we are now in this situation is there a case for us to change our own policies because for la for a long time we have not been committed we have not committed one of the problems with the american establishment or for that matter any writing you see on the court or uh, the western system or whatever you, whichever architecture you call they feel that india doesn't commit and it wants to completely have its autonomy and multilateralism and everything to the extent that at some points of time people have said india wants to have its cake and eat it too sir so is, is there a case I... for us to change no. or thinking no. oh, we uh, i mean uh, i will go along with you but i, I don't want to think but it, i call this a ensnaring strategy they are okay. ensnaring us ensnaring us to becoming moving away from being a partner global strategic partner to an ally and ally means that you will be committed to the american interests and their larger interests and they what one of our problems with uh, with the united states is this is that they give us security assurances that there is always a commitment dilemma we face what are what we call a commitment dilemma from the united states uh, we get assurances there is no doubt that we getting a lot of information from them we no no, no doubt they are opening our doors to us but the question is all these elements are way in the in the past and by that time the comparative power balance may shift it is lucky for us that we are economically getting stronger that would sub- make difference and it's also equally lucky for us as you very rightly point out in your large number of podcasts it that the china is suffering china is suffering militarily china is becoming economically weak the social cohesion within china is getting impacted true but the question basically is this is that what is the architecture and what are the contours of that architecture and here i would put forward another proposition and that my proposition is this is that and i told this to the vietnamese the other day is that we need to work together vietnam indonesia india need to work together to create a strong capacities and capabilities to ensure the chinese do not rough shot anybody in the south china sea chinese are constrained chinese uh, maneuvers are 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 constrained but you know what the vietnamese say they say we have a three no policy okay <laughs> so what do you mean so we we don't want to we don't want to interfere in chinese we, we do not want to go against the chinese and we want to remain neutral that's it indonesians right. indonesians no military capability don't want to power they want to buy large number of aircraft you keep hearing all about them in the this thing but they are all bought from private money so it's they have to raise the money but they can't have don't have the money so sir it's it's a very very tricky situation for a country like india 
So what India has to do, you are rightly saying, and I totally agree with you, remain heavily engaged with the United States, continue to push the agenda, continue to push the thing, and, and seek a more securitized quad in which the quad which does not only look at the problems in East Asia and South China Sea, but also looks across the Malacca Strait and into our problems and, and connect with those with what is happening in, in West Asia to have a seamless security architecture. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. But that's something which is, which is work for us and we have to work on it. And I think you've given yeah. me an idea to write a paper <laughs> on, on, on this no, issue. I, I mean, to be very honest, sir, I, I don't see any other option. I don't see any other option for USA, but to securitize Scott. I don't see another option because USA will be committed in the uh, North Arabian Sea and in the Eastern Indian Ocean for a long time to come. Because this, like you rightly said, the crux of the problem is that between Israel and Hamas. And as far as Israelis don't know how to handle Hamas, Hmm. That problem will not go away and USA has to get committed here. And in the past one month or three months or four months, what we have seen is the West Asia crisis is slowly increasing in its width, activity and scope, right, in, geographically. And slowly our activity or involvement here is going up. Willy-nilly, there is no choice but for us and USA to start acting in sync with each other as the, as the two major navies. We all know that the Europeans don't have capacities. The UK, UK and all, no fellow will come because they also reduced to, actually, my way of looking at it, they are reduced to a man and a dog kind of a thing. They don't have the capacities. The only two capacities which are dominant are that of the India, of the Indian Navy and the US Navy. The rest are all peripheral to the whole story. If this be so, and it is also in U.S. interest that China doesn't establish a base between Hambantota and Maldives. There's no yes. doubt about that. Right. I have my own doubts about Kyakfu for many other reasons. Because the Chinese are in as much pain. As much as we like to think we are in under think that they'll enter, enter through Kyakfu. I feel that the Chinese are also under pain from Myanmar. I'm not too worried about that. But Maldives, Hambantota thing is important. It's important for us and for USA. In this light, the the, the requirement of a new uh, construct, a security compact, and probably even a permanent security, for, uh, you know, permanent secretariat for the court is something which we have to start thinking of. But then, like you said, that's a, a work in progress. We have to start. And in this case, I also feel that this has to start from us. The initiative has to come from us. Because I don't think the U.S. will respond immediately. And maybe if Trump comes, he'll jump at it. But we don't know about that uh, as it. <clears throat> so with this, sir, uh, these are the broad views. The last point I'd like to make is for us mm -hmm. as India to undertake any of this, right? we need to have our economy firing on all cylinders. And for our economy to be firing on all cylinders, this area has to be secure. It's a conundrum. It's a cat 22 India is in. And I do hope that those who matter in Delhi realize this. Unless we, we take the initiative, these problems won't go away. And it we might end up, my fear is that we might end up on the back foot uh, by allowing China a leeway into this area. And that will be disastrous. Whether we like it or not, China has its presence in the Arabian Sea. It's lying low and pr probably biding its time. So uh, your final comments on this, sir, and then we'll take some questions. I totally agree with you, sir. These are my thoughts too. My worry is that we are allowing a lot of leeway in Nepal, Bhutan, uh, Bangladesh. Bangladesh, we are... We are supporting, we are okay right now, but it's a, it's a single lady we are supporting who is becoming increasingly uh, unpopular. And then in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, we have a reasonable relationship, but we do not know 
when things will go out of place. But we need to have a so India has to strong show political will, sagacity, and courage to ensure that our neighbors are on our side, they understand our issues, and like we also need to understand our neighbors' concerns and work in a cooperative manner without enforcing our, our kind of a Monroe doctrine on them to ensure that they do not allow themselves to become to be exploited by the Chinese. That's 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 what I would say, and I agree with you yeah. totally. I, I I think so, sir. And uh, the last line on this is that if you want to do all this, if India has to do all this, it has to change its political military thinking. It has to commit by putting money on the table, and which was actually not evident in our budget yesterday, right? Because unless you put money on the table and you build capacities, your future is not going to be that rosy and your economy might get hurt. That's my way of looking at it. And, and this is something I'm going to talk of tomorrow. When we look at the defense budget, everyone in the media talks of the defense budget as having done something incrementally great. But I feel it has not done. And the events around us are bearing it out. And we'll talk of it tomorrow for all viewers when you join me in the open hour and open session we'll talk of this budget we'll also talk of something which is next to it which the brigadier spoke of that mq9 reaper and what is the impact of buying it or having delayed it having delayed buying it so far and the impact of not developing our own cap capabilities because all these are linked and we'll talk yeah. of it tomorrow good point sir. Yeah. good point i agree with you it's area from my heart and this is something which I think we have actually, if you look at it, it is our collective failure, the collective failure of our politicians and our security setup. All right. Now, having said this, sir, we'll, can we take a few questions with your permission?